Good morning friends. Welcome back to Panika Tutorials. In this video, I want to discuss about inverted page table and its limitations in detail. So I request everyone to watch the complete video for better understanding. First, let me give an overview about the paging. If in a paging, the process will be logically divided into pages and main memory is logically divided into frames. The page size will be equal to the frame size. Look at this example, process P1 is logically divided into 6 pages starting from page number 0 to page number 5 and main memory is logically divided into 16 frames starting from frame number 0 to frame number 15 and each process will maintain its page table. What this information will consist of? Look at here, the process P1 pages such as P0, P2 and P3 are stored in frame number 2, frame number 3 and frame number 4. So page number 0 is stored in main memory frame number 2, page number 2 is stored in frame number 3, page number 3 is stored in frame number 4 because it is a non-contiguous memory allocation as the memory is available continuously free. So I have allocated page number 2, page number 3 and page number 0. Similarly, if you look at the process P2 has its own page table. Okay. So, it also have the page number 0, page number 1, page number 2, page number 3. Now, what will be the size of a page table? The size of the page table of any process will depends on number of entries and the size of each entry. Now, how many entries will be? The number of entries of a particular page table will depend on number of pages in a process. Look at here, the number of entries are 6 entries because this process P1 is logically divided into 6 pages. So page number 0 where it has been stored. Page number 1 is not there in the main memory so that's why invalid bit will be there. Is it clear? See we have a valid or invalid. Valid means the page is available in the main memory. Invalid means the page is not available in the main memory. So that's why I have represented as a cross symbol. So the particular page number 1 is not available. Okay. So what is the purpose of this one is usually the CPU will generate the logical address. Okay. The logical address, the number of bits in the logical address depends on the process size and the logical address is segregated into two parts. One is the page number and another one is the page offset. The number of bits required for the, to represent a page offset will depend on the page size. And the number of bits required for the page number will be re represented using the number of pages. So number of pages, suppose let's take that you have 8 pages in a particular process. Then 8 can be represented as 2 power 3. So 3 bits are required for the page number. Now, how can we convert a logical address to a physical address? We will have a memory management unit. In a shortcut, let me write it as MMU, memory management unit. It will convert the logical address to physical address. The physical address size will depend on the main memory size. So the number of bits in a physical address represents the main memory size. Suppose let's take that main memory size is 256 MB. Okay, then how many bits will be there in the physical address will be 256 can be represented as 2 power 8 and MB can be represented as 2 power 20. So 2 power 28 bytes. If it is a byte addressable format, we need 28 bits to represent the physical address. And the physical address is also logically divided into two parts. One is the frame number, okay, and another one is the frame offset, okay. So the frame offset will be depend on the frame size and frame number will be depends on number of frames in the main memory. Now. We need the memory management unit to convert the logical address to the physical address. Is it clear? So how the logical address will be converted to physical address with the help of the page table of a particular process. So now remember one thing, the page table also should be stored in one of the frame of main memory. If the page table size is greater than the frame size, then we will go for the multi-level paging. If the 
page table size is less than or equal to frame size then we will stop at the single level paging let's assume that this page table size is less than the frame size or equal to frame size so we can fit the entire page table of the process p1 in the frame number 11 similarly at the frame number 13 we stored the page table 2 of the process okay process p2 page table is it clear so whenever a cpu let's take that cpu is asking for a sixth byte okay instruction which is available at the sixth byte of process p1 then cpu will have one register okay it consists of base address of the page table one meaning is that because it is asking for the sixth byte of a process p1 so first it will need to find the where the page table of the process p1 is available so that will be stored in the base address register okay are you able to understand so first it will fetch that one okay then if it wants the let's take that it wants the page number two the sixth byte is available in the page number two okay then it will go to the page number two the page number two is available in the frame number three so the page number will be converted into frame number three okay so it will go to the frame number three and page offset which one it wants the phase offset will be equal to frame offset because the page size will be equal to the frame size so it will go to the frame number three and it will find the particular byte what it wants now what is the problem with this technique is suppose let's take that 100 process are currently in the ready state now you need to maintain the each process has its own page table am i right so all the page tables you need to store it in one of the frames so already main memory is limited we need to store the pages and also the each process page table which will create lot of problem memory constraints will come because if you look at here we are maintaining the process p1 and process p2 pages and also their page tables is it clear similarly if you have 100 process then all the 100 process pages you need to keep not required to keep all the pages on demand whenever a page is required then we will store it into the main memory or we will call it as a swapping process but we need to maintain all the 100 process page tables so that is a memory constraint okay it will consume a lot of main memory so to avoid that one the developers have designed a concept called inverted page table the inverted page table is a global page table for all the process we will have only one page table that concept we will call it as inverted page table now tell me one thing at a time how many pages you can keep in the main memory because the page size is equal to frame size let's take that main memory has 16 frames at a, any instant of time how many pages you can keep at most 16 pages only am i right because you have 16 frames you can keep 16 pages even if you are running thousand process also at the ready state right now is there but out of those thousand process 16 pages only we can keep am i right or wrong so what i want to say is that the number of pages at any instant of time will depend on number of frames so what they have done is that they have made an inverted page table which is a global page table will consist of information like this the indexes will be frame number 0 frame number 2 frame number 3 frame number 4 frame number 5 frame number 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 okay so these are the indices previously if you look at the page table of a process p1 has the indices as page number 0 page number 1 page number 2 page number 3 page number 4 page number 5 but here the indices are the frame number 0 frame number 1 frame number 2 frame number 3 so on okay now it will have the page numbers okay let me keep here page number and even it will have the process id why the process id is required also i will discuss for you okay look at here let me keep it 
it will take some time i want to discuss this concept in a detail lot of students will confuse this concept and in several interviews they will ask this question what is the purpose of inverted page table and what is the limitations of the inverted page table also look at here in frame number 2 you have a page number 0 is it clear in frame number 3 page number 2 is there in frame number 4 page number 3 is there in frame number 6 okay in frame number 6 page number 1 is available in frame number 7 page number 2 is available in frame number 2 page number 4 is available now we need to maintain the page table 1 of page table 2 not required because these are removed and kept the inverted page table concept in place of them the inverted page table came so these page tables will not be there in the inverted page table concept so we no need to keep the page table 1 and page table 2 in some frames of the main memory okay now if you look at here you will get confused sir page number 2 is also available page number 2 is also available okay so there will be a conflict now page number 2 and page number 2 which process so we need to maintain the process id also this is the process p1 this is the process p1 this is the process p1 and similarly this is for the process p2 okay so we need to maintain the page number and it's also process id and other control bits also what is the what you called permission bits we have na no? in page table also we have the entries such as valid or invalid okay and then we have the cache enabled or disabled dirty bit all these things also will be available here i am not focusing on them what are the main one which are compulsory i am discussing them all those are optional okay is it clear so now if you look at here whenever let's take that cpu has generated the logical address it will generate the suppose process p1 it will generate the page number let's take that 4 okay okay and then it is generating the offset to suppose let's take that frame num page number 4 of process p1 and offset is 2 so you need to look at whether page number 1 is page number 4 is available of the process p1 see this is the process p1 and this is the page number so page number is equal to 4 of the process called p1 so you need to look at from the starting frame in the frame number 0 is it available not available in frame number 1 is it available or not not available in frame number 2 is it available no frame number 3 it is not available frame number 4 it is available no in frame number 5 it is available no frame number 6 not available frame number 7 not available frame number 8 page number 4 is available but it is process p2 but we want for the process p1 so it is not available like that you need to look at all the frames so it will take lot of time but in the normal case what we will do we will get the page table base address and then we will add the page number so that we will go to the particular page and we will see whether the frame number is available or not whether the valid bit is 1 or 0 if it is 1 i will say that the page hit and then we will go to the corresponding frame so look at here page number 3 it is a page hit is it clear page number 3 is available so we will call it as a page hit whatever the cpu is trying to access a particular page if it is available in the main memory we will say that it is a page hit if it is not available we will say page fault page number 3 is available in the frame number 4 so it is a page hit it will go to the frame number 4 and it will get the corresponding byte okay but here what we need to do the indices are with respect to the frame number so inside the frame numbers we have the entries called page number and process id so we need to look at all the frames to identify whether the particular page of a particular process is available or not let's take that it is asking for the page number 2 okay page number 2 of process p1 then again you will start searching from frame number 0 frame number 1 then frame number 2 here in frame number 3 page number 2 is available of process p1 so it will go to the 
in the frame number 3 it is available. So it will be converted as frame number 3 and frame offset is 2. So it will go to the frame number 3 and it will get the off byte which is there at the second. Okay, is it clear? So meaning is that in frame number 3, page number 2 of process P1 is available. So we need to go for the linear search. It will take lot of time. But the advantage is that it is saving the main memory. Normally in normal page tables, we need to keep all the process page tables in some of the frames of the main memory. So here the memory is wasted. But in place of the advantage of the main memory, inverted page table will save the main memory. But the thing is that it will take lot of time to identify whether a particular page is available in the main memory or not. So that is the drawback of inverted page table. Due to this drawback, inverted page table concept was not become famous. I hope you have understood what is an inverted page table, why the motivation came to go for the inverted page table and what is its limitations. If you still have any doubts related to the inverted page table, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I will try to clear your doubts as early as possible. Thank you for watching the complete video. Have a nice day.